sing this song together to praise the name of the Lord and to glorify his name. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, my Lord, you are worthy, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, my Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified. You are faithful, you are faithful. You are faithful to be glorified. You are faithful, my Lord, you are faithful. You are faithful to be glorified. The Almighty God will rend heaven and He will pour down blessings upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every agent of darkness that wants to bury your glory, the Lord will destroy them today. In the mighty name of Jesus, every agent of destabilization a sign against your destiny the power of god shall destroy them today in the mighty name of jesus the lord god almighty will open heaven and he will release rain of blessings upon you in the mighty name of jesus the almighty god will bless you beyond your expectation in the mighty name of jesus this week the almighty god is going to plant you in your place of blessing in the mighty name of jesus your blessing shall not be substituted in the mighty name of jesus the anointing to connect to your helpers the lord shall release it upon you in the mighty name of jesus every delegated strong man assigned against you shall be buried in the mighty name of jesus the angel of your blessings shall be released in the mighty name of jesus good things are going to happen to you this week in the mighty name of jesus your blessings that are scattered the angels will gather them for you this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, every blockage, barrier, and hindrance to your blessing, the Almighty God will clear them away. In the name of Jesus, and I decree that good things will take place in your life this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, and anything that needs to repair shall be repaired right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, the spirit of Herod shall not prosper against you in the mighty name of jesus the agenda of spiritual robber shall not prosper against you in the mighty name of jesus all external and internal enemy they shall be put to shame in the mighty name of jesus every record that the enemy is keeping against you i set it ablaze in the name of jesus whatever you lay your hands upon this week it shall prosper in the mighty name of jesus the mercy of god the goodness of god the favor of the lord it shall go with you wherever you go in the mighty name of jesus arrow of death fired against you shall go back to the ascender in the name of jesus arrow of death fired against you shall go back to where it came from in the mighty name of jesus any evil hand that is feeding your problem the hand shall be cut off this week in the mighty name of jesus every satanic agent that wants to steal from you shall die in the mighty name of jesus every witchcraft power flying for your sake shall be destroyed in the mighty name of jesus any battle that wants to disgrace you shall be disgraced in the mighty name of jesus 
I command your blessings to appear by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command your glory to shine. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Almighty God shall take control of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, your finances shall receive divine boosting. In the mighty name of Jesus, your business, your career shall receive divine favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, failure is not your portion in the name of Jesus. Success is your portion in the name of Jesus. Prosperity is your portion in the name of Jesus. Blessing is your portion in the name of Jesus. Increase is your portion in the name of Jesus. I decree all the good things that you desire. Collect it in the mighty name of Jesus. Collect it in the name of Jesus. Collect it in the name of Jesus. The angel of God shall protect you the day and he shall protect you at night. In the name of Jesus, no evil shall be for you. In the name of Jesus, every wicked power that is chasing good things away from you shall die in the mighty name of Jesus. They shall die in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord God Almighty shall open the book of remembrance unto you. In the name of Jesus, you shall not die, you shall live to declare the wonders of God in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you. Bless all your children today and let their blessings be overflowed. I destroy the agenda of cobweb. I destroy the agenda of spiritual blockages. I destroy the spirit of almost death. I destroy every spirit that catches zero in the market square of life. I destroy the spirit of bad luck in the name of Jesus Christ. The Almighty God will reveal himself to you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. We are looking at the topic this morning. It is called power over the spirit of unforgiveness. Power over the spirit of unforgiveness. If there is anything that believers must strive to acquire power over, it is the spirit of unforgiveness. The spirit of unforgiveness can hold you down. The spirit of unforgiveness can hinder your blessing. The spirit of unforgiveness can limit your progress and as far as life is concerned. So the spirit of unforgiveness, a terrible spirit that have destroyed so many people. And as a child of God, you must have power over that spirit. In the book of Luke chapter number 17. Luke chapter number 17. I'm going to read verse number 1. Luke chapter number 17. I'm going to read verse number 1. Jesus said, Then said he unto his disciples, It is impossible that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom offenses come. I read again. Then said he unto his disciples, It is impossible, but offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He's speaking to his disciples. And I also believe you are also a disciple of Jesus. You know, what did he say to them? He said to them that there is no way you can live in this world and you will not be offended. There is no way you can move with men, move with people, go to school, work in offices, go to church. You have work uh, acquaintances, you have colleagues, you have people that you relate with. There is no way you can exist in this world and one day they will not offend you. Somebody will step on your toes. Somebody will misjudge you. Somebody will mishandle you. Somebody will disrespect you. Somebody will do something to you that will make you to be offended. So, as far as you are concerned, you cannot escape being offended. You cannot escape being offended. Jesus says so. He said, offense we always come it will come between brothers and sisters 
It will come between husband and wife. It will come between employee and employers. There is no way you can exist. You can live in this world. You know, it will happen between one group and another group. Even your friends, people you love. You know, people that you are not even, you don't even maintain close contact with. One way or the other. One way or the other. People will offend you. People will do something that will hurt you. People will inflict pain on you. Jesus himself says so. He said offenses will come. You know, there is no way it will not come. I just want you to note that one. So your capacity to handle offenses will determine your progress in life. Your capacity to put offenses where they belong without allowing it to you know, affect you negatively, without allow allowing it to bring bitterness, resentment, guilt into your heart is what makes a sound believer. Offenses are inevitable. You cannot escape it. Offenses is a permanent gift of life. It will come when it will come. It is now left to you to know how to handle offenses. You know? How should we deal with offenses? Jesus make some recommendations to us if we are offended. If people step on our toes, if people hurt us, if people cause us pain, if people do one thing or the other we didn't like, how should we handle it? Jesus prescribed one key. He calls it the key of forgiveness. You know, forgiveness has such a power inside it that it does not only liberate the person who is forgiving, it liberates the person who forgives. You know, it sets you free, delivers you from excess luggage. You know, forgiveness is a powerful thing that believers must live with. Forgiveness bring health, bring joy, bring peace. You know, when you know how to forgive, you cannot live in bitterness. When you know how to forgive, you cannot live in grudges. I want to ask you. Now, do you have anyone who has offended you and you have not forgiven him? You must forgive. You are not forgiving the person because he didn't offend you. You are forgiving the person simply because of you. Because it will affect you. It will hinder your blessing. It will tie you down. It will cage your, your spirit. It will cage your head. You know, Jesus said, forgive. He said, forgive. I read what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. He said, Therefore, if you bring thy gift to the altar, and thou remember that thy brother has aught against thee, he said, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way first to reconcile to thy brother. And then come and offer thy gift. This is what Jesus prescribed. He said, if you want to give your gift on the altar, and you remember that somebody had offended you, he said, now leave the gift on the altar, go back home and look for the person, make with the peace with the person. You know, simply, what he simply said is that you must not hold grudges. You must not keep bitterness. You must not be unforgiving you know you must learn to let go and let god if people offended you don't you know don't write it in black book don't keep record of offenses it doesn't help you you know don't seek revenge don't hold grudges don't be bitter don't keep malice that's what jesus prescribed in matthew chapter 6 verse 12 look at what this scripture said he said, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. What a word. Jesus said, the measure with which we forgive those who are indebted to us is the same measure, the same capacity that heaven too 
will forgive us when we hear. This is the truth as far as heaven is concerned. He said, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Meaning that if you don't forgive men their offense, if you don't forgive men their sins, God himself too will not forgive you. He said, the measure, the rate at which you treat others, that is the same way that God says he will treat you. If you don't forgive your fellow men of their trespasses, your heavenly father says he too, he will not forgive you of your own sins. There are so many people who are holding one thing or the other against their fellow brothers. You know, they are being hurt. I'm not saying that they didn't hurt you. They didn't do what you are claiming that they did. Actually, they did it. Actually, they have caused you pain. Actually, they have betrayed you. Actually, you trusted them, but they, they let you down. Actually, you gave them your, your back and they hurt you badly. I, I know what I'm saying. I know many of us are going about with pain that are being inflicted on people that you put your trust upon. You know, friends, you know, colleagues. I mean, people that you have helped in life. People that one way or the other you have contributed to their success. People one or the one way or the other, God has helped use you to contribute to their progress. But look at them now; they have turned around. They are hurting you with it. You could even remember people you help them to climb. When they get to the top, they will use that that ladder against you. I mean your friends, I mean members of your family, I mean your colleagues, I mean people you live it with in the same house. You know, sometimes you are even right to be offended. You are even justified because they actually treated you badly. Actually, they treated you badly. Any normal person should be offended. But the Bible says you must not allow the thing to go beyond what is supposed to go. Jesus said that your hunger must not go beyond a day. The sun must not go down upon your rod. You know, the sun must not go down upon your rod. And let me tell you, I've seen so many people that came down because they refused to forgive. Their head became bad. Their lives went down. Things became bad. I've even seen somebody who said, oh God, if it is because I cannot forgive, that's why you don't want to heal me. That's so be ye, you know, because the fellow, the person had offended them so great. I've seen unforgiveness in that people's breakthrough. I've seen unforgiveness in that people's blessing. I've seen unforgiveness in that people's progress. And that's why you must forgive because of your own sake. Many people are sick. Many people are stagnated. Many people could not get their breakthrough. The vehicle of the destiny of many people are already packed because of unforgiveness. This is the time to let go. In fact, you need to pray to God to help you. You see, forgiveness is a very terrible sin before the Lord. And uh, the Bible says that any time you come to pray, he said, if you have any heart against another, he said, forgive. You know, if it is prayer you believe will solve your problem. Don't just pray. Make sure you forgive before you pray. In Luke chapter 17, verses 3 and 4, look at what the scripture said. He said, take heed to your son. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he trespass against you seventy times seven in a day, and turn again to thee, say, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. You know the meaning of this verse? He said, no matter what your brother, what your sister has done to you, whatever he has done, if he asks for forgiveness, forgive him. Forgive him. He said, 70 times 7 in a day. What will, you, what will somebody be doing to you that he will offend you 70 times 7 a day? I hope you know the meaning of that. Meaning that the person... Just one day, not, not one year, just one day, 70 times 7, which is, I think, around 4, 490 or thereabout. What will you be doing that somebody will offend you this number of times? So what the scripture is simply saying is that 
it does not pay to keep uh, unforgiveness. It doesn't pay. It will hinder you. It will block you. It will reduce you. In Mark chapter 11, verse 24 and 25, it says, Therefore I say unto you, Whatsoever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye have received it, and ye shall have them. Look at that. He said, Whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you have received it, and you shall have them. That's verse 24. Then verse 25 says, When ye stand praying, he says, Forgive. When you stand pray, forgive. If he had hurt against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you. So the rule of prayer, the first rule of answers to prayer is forgiveness. Forgiveness is very powerful. Forgiveness can close the door of judgment against you. That is when you forgive somebody who offended you, God himself too will also forgive you. There is a great power that is released when you let the offender go. That power is released into your life when you let the offender go. In fact, there was a time Jesus was teaching you know, his disciple on you know, a particular uh, person who, you know, who was holding his master about uh, a large sum of money very large sum of money and then when he met the person who was holding new money you know he heard him and said you must you must pay me my money today the person started begging and said please forgive me please have mercy upon me i will pay you your money and this the owner the person that he holds money just forgave him and said okay you can go the same person that had just been forgiven now met somebody else who was owing a small amount of money. And the same person too, when he heard the person, the same person too started pleading and said, Please forgive me, I will look for your money, I will pay. He refused to forgive the person. He asked the person to be locked up until he was able to pay the money that he was owing. Remember, it was a fragment of amount of money compared to what he himself was owing others. Eventually, some people who witnessed the way he treated the, the person who owed him money went and report to the man who forgave him in, in the beginning that they for, for the first time. And the best man was hungry too. I, invariably, that is talking about God. We have offended God. We have done the worst thing to God. And yet God forgave us. Remember the story of Joseph. What was it that made Joseph to rise on the pinnacle of greatness? It was his capacity to forgive. You know, remember what his brother did to him. Remember how they sold him. Remember how he was treated. All those things that Joseph went through. If he had thought about that, it was enough for him not to forgive those his brother. But he forgave them. He told them, say, why are you afraid? Why are you doing like this? I have forgiven you. He said, the thing that you did to me, you meant it for evil. He said, but see now, God has meant it for good. Look, all these people that have treated you badly, if you can just believe God, that whatever they have done, that God has a way of repaying you. Whatever they have done, God has a way of turning it in your favor. Whatever they have done, some things that you have lost somewhere, God has a way of recompensing you. I just want you to know that please, unforgiveness will hinder your blessing. Unforgiveness will not allow you to move freely. Unforgiveness will become an excess luggage in the vehicle of your destiny. Unforgiveness will tie you down, you know, before your enemies. It will give your enemy power over you. Look at this scripture quickly. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake has forgiven you i mean who are we we have done the worst to god we offended god but christ came and paid you know for our sin he did not sin but he died in our place why will you not forgive your brother? Why will you not forgive your sister? Why will you not forgive your friend? Why will you not forgive your husband? Why will you not forgive your wife? Who are you to say that over your dead body you will not forgive? That is pride. Who are you in the first place? Are you not a person that has that that, that God has shown mercy to? 
How can you be saying, well, we cannot settle here when we get to heaven? Who told you that they settle quarrels in heaven? You know, who told you that they settle quarrels in heaven? Your relationship will get stronger with God when you learn to forgive. You will enjoy divine benefits from God when you learn to forgive. You will enjoy quick answers to prayer when you learn to forgive. You know, but I must also let you know that unforgiveness has its terrible danger. Unforgiveness has terrible danger. But before I tell you, can I ask you some important questions? Do you have somebody that you have not forgiven? How do you feel when you see the person? Anger will well up inside you. You wish that the person, you know, something bad should happen to the person. But do you know that the more you wish the person bad thing, the more the good things happen to the person? You know, when you see somebody that has offended that you have not forgiven, do you see how your heart cut? That is how your life is being reduced. Do you see how something in your heart cut? Particularly when you hear that something good has happened to the person. You know, can I ask you, do you blame others? I refuse to forgive. And hold on to your to your position. Do you keep record of offenses? That is, people who offended you, you have your record, black book, where you date the offenses, the date, and then you will put it there that you must also do your own revenge. So you are waiting patiently, or waiting for the person to fall into your own trap so that you too can pay them back in their coins. When you see somebody who offended you and the person is trying to say something and try to discuss with other people, do you don't you see how you feel bad? Don't you see how you the, the presence of the person irritates you? Don't you see how you are you are just hungry and then yeah, I mean you can't even though you may pretend that everything is well, don't you see that you are not yourself for as long as the person is talking. Now don't you see what you are putting yourself into? You know, do you claim that you are forgiving somebody, but in the real sense of it, you have not forgiven the person? Do you claim that you are forgiving somebody, but really in your mind you are still angry, you are still bitter with the person? Do you claim that you are forgiving somebody, but still knows an opportunity to pay the person back what he has done? Do you claim that you are forgiven, but yet you refuse? To let the person go in your heart. You refuse to let the person go in your heart. You know. You know. Sometimes you will, some people even pray that something bad should happen to another person. I mean the person who offended them. They pray seriously that something bad should happen to the person. Do you speak evil of the person? You know there are people like that. The person that, they are, that, that offended them. Anywhere they go they must talk bad about the person. Sometimes they will may even exaggerate what they are trying to say about the person. Just to make other people believe that the person is bad. You know, sometimes when they see other people, you know, moving freely with that person, they are not happy. They want everybody around them to be angry with the person, to hate the person, you know. And so they keep on speaking evil about the person. Do you make with people so easily? You know, the Bible says, Follow peace with all men. Do you follow peace with all men? Do you claim that you are forgiving? Yet, in the reasons of it, you have not forgiven. You have not forgiven. And anytime you set your eyes on the person, anger will well up inside of you. You know, I ask you this day, do you genuinely, from your heart of your heart, pray for somebody who offended you? Do you pray? Because when you pray for the person who offended you, automatically you will receive grace from God to be able to forgive the person. What I'm saying is if somebody has offended you, what you should do is to pray for the person and as you pray for the person, you will see that God will give you the grace to be able to forgive that person. 
do you use the weapon of silence you know you know to fight the person who has offended you you know use the weapon of silence you treat the person as if he doesn't exist you know do you put up a sanctimonious appearance you know when you see somebody who has offended you uh, but really you know that it is a makeup that you are not real you just pretend that everything is okay but you know in your heart that is not real you know do you whip off sentiment so that all that can join you to avoid the person or to fight the person or to do the same thing that you are doing to the person do you seek reconciliation you know do you set trap for others please these things is on christian and i want you to know that god wants us to forgive freely forgive freely forgive freely forgive may the almighty god strengthen you today in the name of jesus christ and i want to give you opportunity if you are here today you know that you have somebody you have not forgiven and you want the lord to give you special grace and, and strength to forgive you know a lot of blessings are waiting you if you can carry out the you know the forgiveness that you have been told today so many things will happen in your life you'll be surprised if there's anyone that you have not forgiven call them immediately as i'm going to pray with you right now father let the anointing and the power of god be released upon all your children as many as are holding grudge and bitterness and hunger against another fellow deliver them today in the name of jesus christ let your mighty hand of power rest upon them in the name of jesus deliver them from every form of bitterness in the name of jesus touch them with your hands of fire thank you mighty father thank you king of glory in jesus mighty name we pray now if you have not given your life to christ it is time to do so now i want you to pray this prayer right now say lord jesus have mercy upon me forgive me and cleanse me with your precious blood in jesus mighty name we pray heavenly father i pray for your children save their soul deliver them from all their sins thank you father and write their names in the book of life in jesus mighty name we pray now it is time to pray and i want you to pray like you have never prayed before now say you the spirit of unforgiveness lose your hold upon my life in the name of jesus you the spirit of unforgiveness lose your hold upon my life in the mighty name of jesus you the spirit of unforgiveness i charge you lose your hold upon my life in the name of jesus you the spirit of unforgiveness lose your hold upon my life in the mighty name of jesus you the spirit of unforgiveness lose your hold upon my land in jesus mighty name we pray now i want you to say this one loud and clear you the spirit of unforgiveness that wants me to hold grudges and bitterness lose your power and die in the mighty name of jesus you the spirit of unforgiveness that want me to hold grudges and bitterness lose your hold and power in the mighty name of jesus lose your hold lose your hold lose your hold in the name of jesus lose your hold in my land in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray now say this prayer loud and clear every property of hell fire in my life catch fire in the mighty name of jesus every property of hell fire in my life catch fire in the mighty name of jesus every property of hell fire in my life catch fire in the mighty name of jesus every property of hell fire in my land catch fire in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray now say this one says serpent and scorpion on for forgiveness die in the mighty name of jesus you serpent and scorpion on for forgiveness die in the mighty name of jesus you the serpent and scorpion on for unforgiveness die in the mighty name of jesus you the serpent and scorpion of unforgiveness die in the mighty name of jesus you the serpent and scorpion of all forgiveness die in the mighty name of jesus you the serpent and scorpion of all forgiveness die in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray and i pray for every person today that the blessing of god that will make you to be amazed 
The Almighty God shall release it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. The blessing of God beyond explanation. The Almighty God shall give it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. The blessing of God that will, you know, position you for maximum harvest. The Almighty God shall release it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree by the decree of heaven that your wasted years shall be compensated for. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Almighty God shall give you permanent victory over all your enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus, your hand shall be strong on your enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Almighty God shall give you double for your trouble. In the name of Jesus. The Almighty God shall give you double for your trouble in the mighty name of Jesus. All opportunities that will move your life forward shall appear by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Good things shall happen to you this week in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall pursue, you shall overtake, and you shall recover all your blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall pursue, you shall overtake, and you shall recover all your blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? So cleansing blood.